Hello folks. Well, this is the video I promised you on the uh, interface matrix that I posted on our website. And this will be a little bit easier to, to see. But basically the interface matrix, what it does is it captures all the systems that you are going to integrate with and put it into a very simple matrix. So in this case we've got the building systems integration functional subsystem which is here and it's highlighted as a blue color because that's where the intersection point is. So quite simply all we do is is take this list down the left column and just put the acronyms in the top. So in this instance what we're saying here is the building systems integration functional subsystems connects to the information technology functional subsystem. So we put interface number one. Later when we prepare an interface control document or a detailed design document for the interface it'll be identified as a DDD number one for example. Conversely we've got a building management system that also has an interface to the lifts, escalators, and moving walkways. So we see the interface here to number seven, what's well interface number seven, to the lifts, escalators, and moving walkways. And it also has an interface internally to the maintenance management system. So what you do is you just go through from your specifications and populate this chart. So for example, in this case for the Airport Information Management System or AIMS, we generally know that the IT systems will have two interfaces. They'll have one to the master to the uh, gigabit backbone so in this case, our ITS here has an interface to the gigabit. So that's within itself. So the gigabit to the ITS, we'll just call this uh, AA, capital A's. Okay, so we've got now the gigabit backbone network here to the ITS. And the gigabit backbone is GBN, so we've got our GBN column over here, and we know it's got an interface to the uh, ITS, so right there, we put another AA. Because it could be that the gigabit backbone is done by a separate subcontractor, then who's doing all the information technology systems. So you never really know, even though they're functionally grouped under this section, you never really know if your subcon you may have the main same main contractor, but you may have different subcontractors. Now we also know that it's got to have some cabling. Okay, so we do a BB and that's the FCS, Fixed Communication System, to the Information Technology Systems, and we put a BB there. Okay, quite simply, now you know that your, your detailed design document or your interface control document is going to be labeled perhaps uh, ITS-AIMS, uh, sorry, ITS dash uh, uh, AA, sorry, ITS dash GBN interface AA. Okay, so now you know you have to get sign-offs and agreements between the GBN and the ITS, where the AA intersects. So in other words, you need two signatures on your, on your design document. And if we look at other systems like some special airport systems down here, you, these are not part of the IT. Okay, so say for example you've got a fire alarm system here. 
So we generally realize that for fire alarm systems, they will not use a common backbone. Okay, so for the fixed communication system, which is this column over here, that would be left blank. The closed circuit TV, uh, sometimes it's going to use the gigabit and the fixed communication systems. So you would then populate, in the case of uh, your closed circuit TV, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I don't have to scroll around. It's still readable, basically. So if we look at the closed circuit TV and we determine that it's going to use the fixed communication system, which is your FCS, which is here. So there we would put a CC, the next interface. Okay, now conversely we have to have a CC on the top. So we're going to go to the fixed communication system line here. In the CCTV we put a CC. And you would continue to populate this document uh, in accordance with how you would like those systems to interface. In other words, who's sharing it. Now it's important that you do this prior to writing your specifications details. Okay, because we know that each one of these systems could in fact have its own gigabit ethernet network and it could have its own structured cabling system or fixed communication system. In this example, the fixed communication systems includes both copper like CAT6, CAT7, or whatever we're up to, and fiber optic backbone cabling. Your gigabit is generally your, your like your Ethernet stuff, like you use on the net. So for example, in the case of customs, immigration, and police, they typically do not like to share common resources, uh, despite the fact that you can segment your local area networks with VLANs and secure the LANs. These, these outfits, these sections of government are typically old school and they have their own IT departments and their covert uh, surveillances. So sometimes the engineers say, well, the ITS, the information technology infrastructure can handle their data which may be their, their, their screening terminals, it could be their data entry terminals, it could be their uh, biometric systems and all that. And sometimes the engineers don't really consult with these guys. And then they find out later in the day that the immigration system says, no way we're using your system, we're, we're going to do our own. You can install cable for us, but don't install any, any equipment on it. The same thing for fire alarm. You know, sometimes the fire alarm system can use a common cabling system or be done by a common cabling contractor. However, fire alarm systems are typically uh, daisy chained their devices. So the star wired uh, CAT6 network doesn't really apply. The same would apply to public address and other things down here. So before you start writing all your specs, your designer has got to communicate with these folks to find out if they really want to use a common infrastructure or not. Because at the end of the day, they can't be forced to use it. Because obviously, an international airport can't open without immigration, customs, and police. So find it out early, because otherwise, you get to the end of the project and they say, we're not using your stuff, <laughs> and you haven't made provision for any of their own uh, equipment. So basically, that's the long and short of an interface, uh, an interface matrix. Now, for larger airports, this matrix could be a hundred by a hundred, and it's a very intense and uh, long, drawn-out process to define this. Okay, and in subsequent videos, which I'll link in the article, I'll show you different ways that you could group these. Sometimes like these are all grouped together. So you've got one main SAS 
server and all of these guys connect to him so any information that has to say go from the gate system up to the airport operational database would first go to the SAS functional interface and then from SAS over to the ITS functional interface and then down to the AODB. It sounds a little complicated but sometimes you have to do this because with data you typically only have one owner of the data. Okay, And that is only uh, insured by saying that the data associated with uh, system A, the owner who can update, create, modify, delete is them and that the, the AODB is only the receiver of that information because otherwise you get double updates and it's hard to keep your systems in sync. Anyway, interface matrix. Very simple. Do it at the beginning. Think about what you're doing. Talk to all the stakeholders and people that are doing this and ensure that the owner's requirements and the, and the engineering best practices are, are, are adhered to because at the end of the day there are some uh, minus the the other bits but in this simple simple example there, there's over 30 individual systems that all could be done by different subcontractors subcontractor one subcontractor two this could actually be two three and four so it's important that when you get this information into a design document specification that can be tendered you very clearly identify what you want this guy to do in support of the rest of the uh, systems that may or may not interface to them. Otherwise you'll run into significant problems um, as far as them telling you that it's not in my scope, it's going to cost too much, who's going to pay for it, and all those things. Anyway, hope you liked the video. We'll be back to you with more examples soon.